Hello again, welcome back to today's episode. Um, this is a kind of final video really on the, the Nikon lens series that I've been running recently this week. Um, now we come to the autofocus area and uh, we're going to start off with the first kind of nickels, which are these, the AF nickel. So anything that's labelled as AF nickel, you know that's quite an early nickel lens design. I've got to say AF has really been the problem for nickel, they just couldn't decide how they were going to implement AF and also maintain the backward compatibility. So as we can see previously, or from previous videos, this lens is an AI compatible lens. It's also AIS because it's got the little divot in there. AIS, and I forgot to mention it in the AIS video, the smallest F numbers are always in orange. So if you see an orange um, big number at the end, then that shows it's a AFS lens as well. These ones all feature a lock, so you can lock the, uh, the aperture at uh, the smallest setting. This is to allow things like program and shutter priority. And you'll also notice down on the bottom here a screw. And this is what drives the autofocus. Um, there isn't an autofocus motor in the lens. The lens is quite a simple design, but it includes this screw mount. And what that does, you must forgive me, I don't have any autofocus film cameras because autofocus didn't really appeal to me. I couldn't see the point of it, to be honest. But there we go. Um, this little notch looks like an allen key or a screwdriver on the camera body this is when it's set to AF uh, if you set it to manual it disappears back into the body and then you set the camera back to oh, autofocus it pops out only the higher end cameras seem to have that this is a D7000 again apologies for digital uh, the D3 is the same and these cameras also have the um, the AI coupling you can't see that there I hold it. you can see it's got the AI coupling prong as well so the old manual focus AI lenses will work on this and that lens will work fine and autofocus on this so AF Nichols were the very first there was an earlier kind of autofocus that Nikon experimented with. Um, there was an F3 version called the F3 AF um, that was sort of introduced in the sort of uh, early to mid 1980s, sort of 83 to 86 time. Didn't really take off, to be honest. It's not something, it's more of a collector's thing nowadays. Sometimes see them for sale on eBay, but they always ask a lot of money for them. And, there's not a lot of lenses that work on the system. It was just obviously very early days and they were playing about and experimenting with it. It wasn't really to the F4 in 1988. But the AF sort of really came to, to fruition for Nikon. They were all body driven. This is called screw drive lenses. So that's an AF Nikon. This FE, which is a manual film camera, which we've seen in earlier videos, this one is also wearing an AF nickel, a 28mm 2.8, as you can see, it's got the locking ring, it's got the AI tabs on it, and it works just fine, obviously with manual focus, because this isn't an autofocus camera, it's really dirty as well, I'm going to give this one a good cleaning, but that's a 28mm, that's an AF nickel. Following on from the AF nickel, we then got the AF, which is the D version. So you can see this is an AF nickel, but it says 1.8D. Still got the lock button, still got the orange, still got the two sets of, of scales so that can be read in the viewfinder, AI coupling prong. And these are all AIS, obviously, because it's got the orange ring. I can show you it's AIS. There's a little divot, a little divot in the back. Uh, they all meet the AI and AIS specifications. Again, that'll work on uh, on a film camera. Um, yeah. 
some of the digital cameras you can put in uh, um, the focal length of the earlier lenses, like an AI lens, you can put in the focal length of the aperture. And that will still give you the 3D matrix metering and EXIF data as well, because you put in the focal length. So they're trying to stick with the F-mount and keep backwards compatible. The only difference with a D is that it passes the distance information on of where the lens is focused to. And it uses that information for the 3D matrix metering and also for flash. So the AF nickels tend to be cheaper. So I'd stick to buying the AF nickels, um, the Ds if they're reasonable sort of value. And the AFDs sort of came out in the early 90s, kind of by 92. There's an AFN, but nobody really uses the AFN designation. It's just to do with the difference in the, in the feel of the grips. The early AFs had, this is an AFN, the earlier AFs had horrible grips on them because nobody thought that they'd manually focus the lenses. Um, but people prefer the the beefier grip so an AFN lens it's not really a designation to worry about to be honest uh, this F3 is wearing a 18 to 35 and this is an AF and it's a D again it's got the uh, the aperture ring lock and it's got the uh, the orange uh, minimum number so it meets the AI and the AIS specification. This is an AI camera, so it works fine on that. Uh, another one of the Nikon things, this ED, which is the ED glass. Uh, but yeah, that's a D one, so again, it would pass information back, but not to this camera. But you can use these on both digital and on the older film cameras. Uh, they're not pre-AI unless you put a put rabbit's ears on them. Some lenses you can modify and put rabbit's ears on them. Yeah. I have a little, yeah this one has, it's got a couple of marks on there. I don't know if you can see that, it's got like a little pair of little holes there where you could attach rabbit ears if you wanted to use it on a pre-AI. To be honest it's nicer to use the proper sort of lenses on the proper cameras. This monster at the back this is quite an early one. I think this is the first version of the 80 to 208. It's not a D, it's just an AF nickel. Again, a screw mount lens. These are all screw mount lens, screw drive lenses for the autofocus. Um, AFS, I sort of had a change of heart. This is 1996 we're up to now, and they kind of realised, I think, following the success that Canon had with the EF mount. Uh, in the Canon system, all lenses have a, a drive motor in the lens. They don't have any screw drive lens systems at all. There's no Canon EF camera that has a screw drive in the body. Um, Canon made the sensible decision, a bit of a gamble, I suppose, um, to put a motor in every lens. Um, the lenses are therefore more complicated, which is a downside to it, and more expensive. Um, but it's a, a, a slightly better system and it's become more the norm. So in 1996, Nikon followed suit a little bit late to the game, but they went for the AFS system. This is a silent wave motor. Um, this has been recently updated. Now they have the AFP, which is this pulse motor design. It's not particularly backwards compatible with any cameras before sort of about uh, 2013, sorry. AFP lenses don't tend to work with them. Uh, it doesn't work. They don't work on my D7000, for example. Um, but they do work on the D7100. And I don't think they work on the D3 series cameras, the X and the S. I think they only work on the D4s. But this one contains the, the motor inside the lens. Um, G series lenses are often referred to as gelded. As you can see, there's no aperture blade. It's not um, AI compatible. I don't think it has a little notch in the back. Of it. So, oh, it does have a little notch in the back. Or is that the locking pin? That's the locking pin. So no, it's not AI or AIS. So these lenses really now, the G series lenses are of no interest to film photographers. 
no aperture ring, so you, you can't you can't do anything with them. Old film cameras have no means of setting the aperture. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at today. So as you can see, Nikon got their sort of pants in a twist over autofocus, and they kind of implemented it in a sort of not a haphazard way. I, I can see they're thinking at the time about putting the autofocus motor in the camera body and not the lens. But ultimately that proved to be their sort of downfall. Um, the Canon systems were far better for autofocusing. And it's why well, now at sporting events you'll see just a range of white lenses. Um, whereas going back to the 60s all you would see is black Nikon lenses. Um, so it's quite an interesting history, the battle between the two camera companies. Obviously Canon failed with their efforts with the F1 camera in 71 to displace Nikon as the world's number one camera manufacturer. But they came back in the 80s with the EF mount. And yes, they knocked Nikon down to number two and Canon became the number one camera company in the world. Interestingly, Sony are doing a similar sort of thing. Sony are now number two, so I think Sony with the mirrorless system are determined to chase after Canon. So, yeah, there's, it's always been this sort of battle in the camera industry. But yeah, that's my sort of sum up of the autofocus lenses. I'm not particularly interested in them. I prefer the old manual lenses, particularly the pre AI and the AI lenses. Um, I really only have these lenses because of the, uh, the, the digital side of things. Um, they do work, some of them work backwards, which is quite nice. But obviously going forward, they made it clear with the G lenses and also now they've got the Z6 and the Z7, or Z6, Z7, and their new mount. But then Canon have done the same things with the, uh, the R sort of series, haven't they? So uh, we'll see what the future brings, but yeah. Hope you found this interesting and informative and if you're looking for these lenses, like I say, the AF Nickel is a good value for money, providing you've got a screw drive camera body, which is why I suggest if you're looking for a Nikon digital camera, um, get one that's got a screw drive so you can use take advantage of these lenses for both analog film photography and also for digital photography. Thank you very much for watching. Comment down below any questions, I'm quite happy to answer. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.